so hey everybody, I'm Zix from Skywind. Uh, I've done a bunch of level design in the past. Uh, currently, I'm more on like the 3D end, but I still have like a super strong passion for level design. I think it's like, you know, that and 3D sort of ties together really well. And I enjoy both of them. Um, I'm a level design teacher, I guess, is sort of somewhat here at the AU. Uh, I pop in every now and again to help everybody. Um, uh, when we do like this overhaul of the level design sort of uh, uh, like the workflow for students, uh, hopefully this sort of stuff will be implemented into that. Um, we've like Pedro and I and a bunch of others have sort of been in talks to see what's best for students. And like I said, we sort of came up with this sort of uh, level structure. So like level one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this uh, presentation will sort of cover that first level. So your sort of first assignment, uh, if you're accepted onto a team, uh, you, you know, you get your first assignment. This is uh, what you're supposed to work on. You focus on that and that's it. Um, or, you know, you come on to the AU to learn and you sort of grab this first assignment as like uh, sort of you, you know, th yeah. this is what you're going to use to learn. And from there, you can branch out to real assignments. So uh, we'll go over that today. Uh, I'm just going to go over uh, some, you know, how how you'll sort of go about it. Uh, there's usually like a planning phase. Uh, so there's a bunch of things that go along with that. Uh, and then, you know, you just sort of hop into Creation Kit and design it. Uh, and then if we have time at the end, depending on how long I go, um, we can sort of uh, go through one of these assignments together. I made like a finished example of one of the prompts that we actually have up. I don't think we have it on a Trello anywhere, but I can link it uh, just a Google Drive of like some prompts. Uh, and I'll show you sort of how to go through one of them. Uh, but before we do any of that, uh, I sort of kind of promised that I would go into like a very, very brief intro to the creation kit. Uh, so we'll go into that. Uh, and apologies in advance. I didn't realize it until now, but uh, the colors on this PowerPoint just look like mustard and ketchup, and it's kind of gross. So sorry about that. Uh, OK, so we'll do just a super, super brief intro to the creation kit. Uh, I don't expect uh, you to get like everything from here. You're not going to know how to like download it or anything, but I'll sort of go over the stuff that you will need for uh, like if you go to start level design, these are the key aspects that you'll have to remember. Uh, just as a sort of start, uh, if we don't have any super, super crazy basic stuff on the AU YouTube, I, I don't think we do, but somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, these series are really, really good for learning. Uh, Bethesda has their own back from when Old Rim was first like coming out the creation kit. I think it came out of like uh, early 2012, the year after it came out. But uh, they have a really long series on sort of, you know, this is how you install it. This is how you open a plugin. This is how you sort of go through it. Uh, same thing, Darkfox127, uh, he has like a 10 part series. I think he's rebooted it since then for like special edition. This is the guy I learned from, and he's got an uh, interesting accent, unlike mine. So he's fun to listen to. Uh, same with this guy. Uh, he's also got uh, this video in specific, uh, specifically the part seven goes into like really quickly sort of bullet point. Like here's how you start designing a level, like from square one to basically finishing. Uh, yeah. Uh, so key things for like, if you're doing level design, uh, that you want to remember for the creation kit, uh, pardon the stock photos, but I thought they were funny. Uh, you want to remember your camera controls. Uh, so for your render window, which, you know, you're going to be looking at the entire time, uh, you're sort of like dragging things into the render window, uh, moving them around. Uh, you can't really do that unless you know how to control the camera. Uh, any 3D people in here will also know that like you can't run 3D software without controlling your camera. You know, you can't really walk around your front yard without turning your head. So you got to know your camera controls. 
uh, things like shift and left mouse button uh, that moves the camera, uh, middle mouse button pans the camera, mouse wheel is zooming, shift F is something that I see nobody uses. I don't even think it's documented anywhere, maybe, maybe one spot, a really obscure spot, but it sort of focuses your camera on an object. It's super, super helpful. It, honestly, I, I, it's one of those things that is like not really there, but I use it all the time. Uh, you also want to remember uh, some design controls, which I sort of call them uh, left mouse button. It helps you translate the object. So like moving it from left to right, up and down, blah, blah, blah. Right mouse button rotates. Uh, you can rotate and translate on different axes. So Z is Z axis, which is like up and down, X, X axis, and C is the Y axis. Instead of it being Y on your keyboard, you know, Z, X, C are right next to each other if you're using a QWERTY keyboard. Uh, if you're not using a QWERTY keyboard, sorry, I can't help you. I don't know what the buttons are. Uh, but that's if you want to like translate and rotate on specific axes. Uh, so these are really helpful. Uh, Q is your snap. Uh, uh, control Q is angle snap. So if you want to snap to like uh, 15 degree, 30 degree, uh, 45 degree angles. Um, uh, control Q is good for that. Uh, just plain Q is sort of translating. So if you tuned into the tile set presentation that I did, uh, Skyrim, uh, we all know, works off of uh, grid units of power of two. So uh, 256, 512, uh, you can snap to that. So when you work with the tile set, you want to snap your tile set pieces together so you don't have seams and stuff like that uh, when you're working with clutter so like really nice fine details you know putting plates on tables and putting keys on like bookshelves and stuff you don't really want to use snap because then it just looks not very organic it it doesn't feel real so snap is good for some things not good for other things uh s is a hot key for scale uh, you want to hold s and then just like sort of drag in and out and it'll scale objects uh, and F is also a very useful key. It will drop the object that you're selecting to the ground. So if you sort of have like a pot or something like that, or a plate, and it has an origin point, which is the yellow plus, uh, the yellow 3D looking plus that you'll see, that's the origin of the object. And when you press F, it's going to drop that object down to the nearest collision point that it meets. So in the case of like cave floors, uh, if you sort of place a plate into uh, your render window and you want to drop it down to the bottom of the cave floor, you just press F and the plate is going to go smack dab to the bottom of the cave floor. Uh, this is really useful for cluttering. Again, like if you want to put things on bookshelves, uh, you sort of just push uh, F and it'll smack it down. Uh, it depends for certain uh, assets. So I think things like pitchers sort of have their uh, origin points in the middle of the pitcher. A uh, pitcher being like the thing that, you know, you dump water out of into cups. Uh, so when you drop it down onto a table, you know, suddenly it's like intersecting with the table. So you want to sort of hold your Z to move it on the Z axis straight up and down and translate it up. So F is pretty nice, but sometimes it doesn't work. So uh, next uh, thing for general creation kit tutorials, you sort of want to remember your windows. Um, so you have your object window, which ha has, um, uh, it lists all your objects. So it has your file uh, sort of workflow in there. Uh, you can look for your architecture objects. You can look for your clutter objects. And then from there, you can go sort of more in depth. So you can open the architecture folder and then open the Dwemer folder. And then from there, you can open the interior folder. And then you have interior Dwemer architecture pieces that you can sort of use. And same thing goes for anything like uh, idle markers, uh, books, uh, any clutter objects, NPCs, stuff like that. Uh, you have your cell view window. So when you're working with like vanilla Skyrim, for example, uh, your cell view uh, will allow you to uh, look through all of your cells. So interior cells, uh, you can open up your world spaces, uh, which is sort of like a different drop down, but it's in that same uh, window. And you can just maneuver that through here. Uh, you also have your render window, which is the big thing. You know, whenever you watch somebody do creation kit stuff, 99% of it is in the render window. 
that's sort of you know your design space your what you're doing so that's what you're going to be seeing in game so that's a key thing uh, and then toolbars you want to remember your toolbars uh creation kit in general has the big one at the top and then if you go into you know other things you know you have a nav mesh toolbar you have um uh you have uh when you go selecting like actors and stuff like that you have inventory toolbars and stuff like that uh and then uh haha nav mesh joke uh you have advanced things so uh if you get like into you know oh my god he's going crazy if you go into uh the more advanced things uh you'll have like nav mesh to work with you'll have optimization to work with there are tutorials for that separately uh, you can start editing objects, so you know you can sort of create texture palettes, make different textures for your floors, just sort of be more creative with it. Uh, and then you have lighting, which is another sort of advanced thing. Uh, it's really easy to get into, but then you know the nitty gritty of it is a little more difficult. Uh, you have object palettes, I think that's what that stands for, uh, or opals, opals, whatever. Uh, it's really good for if you want to group uh, sort of. Um, uh, you have a lot of similar clutter items, and you want to smack them all together, sort of in a group, so you don't have to go through your object window 50 different times to get, like, a plate, a pitcher, a fork, uh, you know. Uh, you can sort of go to your Opal and dump it in there, and then just open up your Opal, and you have, like, a whole kitchen dining set sort of right there, and you can drag it all in. And then actors are really advanced. You can sort of stat people. Uh, you have the charge in, so character generation or NPCs in the creation kit. You have faction control in the creation kit. So, you know, you have like a cave of bandits and uh, in Morrowind, for example, they have like slaves. So you don't want the bandits to start murdering their slaves. So you put them in the same faction so they won't do that. Uh, stuff like that. Uh, that's it for basic level design tutorials. Uh, just again, things that you wanna remember. Uh, it, if you go through those YouTube videos, that's sort of things you want to keep in mind for level design. Um, do, do, do. So uh, when you start level design, like your first assignment ever, you want to begin with planning it. Uh, nothing happens without planning. And uh, I, I've gone through like time and time again, you know, I'll jump into it. I'll just start doing something. And I didn't plan anything. And it just does not work out. It, it's it sucks. Like the design is awful. Uh, you know, you have long spiraling hallways, and suddenly it's a maze. It's like, oh, is there a way to get out? That's really easy. Um, you know, where are you going to place enemies? It's just giant hallways. Uh, you know, you sort of make like a home for a guy. Oh, I forgot to include space for a bed. So like, what do you do then? You know, you you have to start with the planning phase first. Um. Planning can be a lot of different things. Uh, so I just slapped some random examples in here. Uh, this was a puzzle that I was planning at one point for a Skywind Dilemma Ruin. Uh, that never happened because we didn't have assets. And then that's sort of what pushed me to join 3D because I wanted to make these assets. And now I'm not part of level design anymore. So I didn't really make this puzzle. But it, you know, like you can plan these sort of things out. Uh, just random notes in MS Paint. Uh, same thing down here. This was a, uh, I think this might be like uh, Lalu Ancestral Tomb uh, from uh, one of our Skywind level designers. Uh, he wrote, you know, just in MS Paint, like these planning notes. Uh, you can see that he sort of started making the dungeon already, but he didn't finish it. So like there's a dead end here, a dead end here dead end here and he sort of made notes to continue so you know you can do your planning in phases and whatnot uh and this was sort of like some advanced like planning stuff i had done for a grazeland cave uh nolit or nolit whatever something like that um you know it was sort of like how to use the assets uh how references for clutter and stuff like that um sort of like what the uh uh, actors would do uh, just sort of some, you know, random planning notes, whatever. Um, but, but, but one of the key things that you sort of want to do when you plan, uh, especially for your first assignment, is if 
at least in the workflow that I think is going to be on the AU sort of level design Trello or level design, you know, doc or whatever, we're going to have prompts for you guys to follow. So, uh, you know, you can start level designing, whatever, build a house. Okay. But it, that's not really indicative of, you know, when you join a project, they're going to want you to do certain things. So, you know, it's not just going to be here, design a random house. Uh, you know, it'll be here, design a random house in Cyrodiil. So, you know, you want to take into account certain things. So, you know, just with that little addition, it's like, okay, what's the culture in Cyrodiil? Uh, you know, who, who's who's the guy or gal or family who's living in this house? Uh, you know, what race are they? Uh, what what do they do? What's, what's their um, occupation? Stuff like that. Um, so for one example, I sort of threw up here uh, in Skywind. Our prompts are, we're making, we're doing like a remake or a reboot, whatever. So our prompts are on the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages or UESP wiki. So, you know, this would be our prompt, for example. So we can sort of pick things out and that helps our level design uh, or, you know, figuring out what the heck we're going to do because this right here is really boring. It sucks. So we want to make that better. Um, one important thing to point out, uh, at least in sort of Skywind's version of prompts, is like, you know, this dungeon has a quest in it. So that's huge. You want to plan basically this whole dungeon around the quest. Otherwise, you know, it just doesn't really make sense. Uh, so, you know, you want to open up the other page, you know, sort of go through, you know, the walkthrough of the quest, stuff like that. Uh, who's involved in the quest, uh, this person, she's XYZ, blah, blah, blah. Uh, there's also, uh, the dungeon is filled with, like, undead. It's in the Grayslands region, so it'll sort of, you, sort of help you uh, with, you know, what do we put in this dungeon? Uh, where is it? So is there going to be, like, any fauna in here? Probably not, because it's a dungeon, but, you know, stuff like, uh, whatever plants are in the Grazeland region, maybe like there are some leaves that blew in through the doorway here or something like that. Just little details. Uh, further details. Um, th this is a big one, especially in this example. Uh, there's like over 100 tombs in Morrowind and they're all like, you know, owned by families or whatever. There are no known members of the Favel family. So that will help you big time in figuring out what's going in this tomb. You know, is it abandoned? Because there's no family members living on Vardenfell. Uh, is it overrun by something else? Uh, maybe like some necromancer hopped in there, but we have to take into account, you know, there's a quest character in there. So maybe she's doing something in there. Who knows? Uh, and then another thing. Like, this is a skill book and just Morrowind things. Like, we want to keep that in there. And again, this layout is super boring. So sort of help that out. Uh, a non-Skywind example, more an AU example, more for you guys. Uh, this is straight up taken from, uh, I think it was Pedro's Google Drive. Uh, he wrote this prompt. This is a prompt for you AU students in here. Uh, this is a level uh, level one prompt, I think. So I took a really easy one, you know, like a super basic, you know, prompt, and I sort of went through it myself. And uh, for the planning stages, it sort of went through it and see what information I could gather from this prompt in order to make the best sort of designed level to fit this. Um, as a student, you're probably as your first assignment going to grab one of these prompts. This is like one of four or five, I think, that are in there right now. Uh, maybe a little bit more, but uh, you'll grab one of these. Uh, they're up to interpretation. So, you know, what I do is not what you're going to do, but you'll grab this sort of design a level and then throw it back at the teachers and the teachers will give you feedback. <laughs> feedback back to you. Huh? But, um, you know, that's sort of how it goes, sort of how you learn. Uh, so. I'll go through the prompt here and just reading it straight down and we'll break it apart. So uh, this is written by Pedro again. He's another level design student. 
Alkir was a mage trying to use his alteration and destruction magic as a mystic catalyst for his alchemy when a heavy tremor caused a pyre, pile of fire salts to fall into the mixture. The blast could be heard from the nearby townsmen, but after that was complete silence. No one really cared for Alkir that much, given his eccentricities. However, the barkeep has asked you to check his homestead after the cataclysm, not out of fear of Alkir's life, of his coin. So, a couple theme things we can glean from here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. His name is Alkir, so it's just a dude. Uh, maybe we can figure out a race from here. I don't know what this sounds like to you guys, but this sort of sounds like the Alkir in Skyrim, so maybe he's a Red Guard. I don't know. You know, you might get different sort of feelings about it. Maybe he was an Argonian who was raised by, you know, a different culture. So he was named Alkir. Uh, who knows? But that's how I interpreted it. Uh, we get a character archetype from him. He's a mage. So straight up. Uh, he uses alteration and destruction magic a good bit. This is detail that maybe you don't have to focus on. Maybe you do focus on. I don't know. I really didn't focus on it here, but it's up to interpretation. Uh, he was doing some dangerous experiments, probably. Uh, there was an explosion. Uh, his alchemy, you know, maybe it's some crazy stuff. Who knows? Uh, this is a point of maybe interest. Uh, we could sort of have. You know, what What caused this heavy tremor? Was it just like a natural earthquake? Was it like, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know. That That's like a point of interest that you could sort of, you know, extrapolate on further. Uh, and then uh, we continue on. Fire salts fell into his alchemy mixture. There was an explosion. So this is the big thing in the scene. You know, uh, when you look at this prompt, I don't think you get anything else as important as this point. There was a big explosion. The guy is probably dead. Design a level based on that. So we'll continue on with that as our key thing in mind. Uh, there are nearby townsmen. They could hear the explosion. So it's probably in a town. Maybe it's near a town. I, we don't know. We'll figure that out. But that's one thing to take into consideration. Uh, and there was complete silence after the explosion. So he's probably dead. Sad times, I know. We, we've grown to know him so much after this one sentence, but it's a, it's a sad time. He's dead. Uh, he has some eccentricities. Uh, that's a big word for like, wow, he's, he's got some crazy interests. Uh, maybe that's something you can take into account. Uh, you'll see that in the finished product, I did very much so. <laughs> because I had fun with it, but, um, you know, that might be something you ignore, but taking it word for word, that's sort of how I went about it. Uh, the barkeep asked you to check his homestead, so it's the guy's home. Uh, he's not, like, in some mage's guild or something. He's not in, uh, you know, like a bunkhouse or anything. It's this guy's home. Uh, and no one really cares about him, so maybe he lives alone. Uh, Maybe he has a family, and maybe he, I don't know. Uh, the, again, the prompt is, you know, up to your imagination. But in this case, I just had him being alone. It's his house, whatever. Uh, and then, um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, the barkeep asked you to not check out, you know, whether he's alive or dead, but to go see, uh, inquire about his coin. <laughs> So maybe he has, like, a good bit of money. Maybe he sort of flaunts it in town or something. Uh, he's a mage, so, you know, maybe he has good work. Uh, maybe he sort of purchases, you know, enchanted things, or people go to him for training or something like that. So he's got some money to put away. Uh, but, yeah, you can sort of pick out, like, big things. So, again, alchemical explosion, it's some dude's home. Uh, and he's dead. Like, those are probably the big things. And some minor things, like, maybe he had some money, it's near a town, uh, maybe he's like a red guard or something, so sort of cultural influence on that. And then, haha, it was written by Pedro, so should we make it a cave? That's sort of a joke, but that fell flat. Yikes. Anyway, 
Uh, blah, blah, blah. So yeah, uh, continuing from the prompt, you sort of want to take away the main ideas from the prompt, uh, and the little things from the prompt are sort of like fine details that you can sort of extrapolate on once you get the bigger picture across. So the main ideas that I picked out, again, is it's Alkir's home. Uh, there was an alchemical, alchemical explosion. Uh, whatever aftermath is there, is there. And then uh, he's dead. So big things right there. You know, you have the building blocks for your scene perfectly written in those three points. Um, but, but, but little things are things like uh, he lives alone. So, you know, maybe one bed, uh, one set of silverware, uh, uh, like one cabinet for clothes, uh, stuff like that. Really small house, perhaps. Um, or maybe, you know, you took the money comment in a different direction and he's got a really big house and he lives alone or he lives, you know, with his family alone in that big house or something. It'll depend on how you take the prompt. Uh, some more little things. Uh, the clutter of his house might be some like mage paraphernalia because he's pretty good at alteration and destruction magic. Uh, he likes alchemy. So, you know, he'll have like potions lying around or he'll have ingredients lying around. Um, uh, maybe some uh, robes, um, you know, whatever mages do in Skyrim or Cyrodiil or wherever you're working. Uh, uh, he had some money, so maybe he's got like some cash just lying around, like chump change, just sort of sitting on a dresser. Uh, maybe he has like some expensive things sitting off to the side. Those are things to take into account when you're planning. Uh, and then from like the little things and the main ideas, you can sort of use your creativity and critical thinking to sort of extrapolate upon uh, everything in the prompt and sort of go into very, very fine details like what was his race? Uh, what sort of culture does he practice? You know, uh, does he live in Cyrodiil versus Morrowind? What are the architectural styles? Uh, what are the materials that they use for furniture? Um, is he rich? Is he poor? What sort of, you know, materials can rich have, uh, rich people have versus poor people? Uh, he's a mage, so what sort of things does he have lying around in his house? Uh, I guess I already mentioned location. So like Cyrodiil versus Morrowind versus, you know, does he have a hut in like Argonia or something, uh, Black Marsh? Uh, and then uh, is there any quest association with um, uh, this prompt? So uh, I think it's the level two and three-ish prompts that we have on the Google Drive right now are, I think, I think one of them was written by Hendris. Um, sort of, you know, we have like the writing sort of part of AU uh, uh, adding on to like they're writing their own prompts so you can get a sense of uh, when you're part of a team, you know, your prompt isn't just going to be like, you know, random house, random people, or it might be, but, you know, the more difficult things will be, you know, this place has a quest associated with it. So take that into account. Um, stuff like that. Uh, I sort of went ahead and did a little sketch here in MS Paint. Again, like planning does not, you don't need to do any detail things when you go about planning. But I sort of went along with, uh, you know, he's got a smaller house. He's living alone. He's got mage stuff going on. Uh, this is the first floor. So he's got like one door uh, to go in and out. Uh, he's got a bed. There's like a chest here. I forgot to label that. Uh, maybe there's a locked door here to sort of go into like his mage quarters or something like that. He's got one chair, one dining table because he lives alone. I have NPC size for reference just so you can sort of see the scale of everything. And then, uh, you know, in his like mage study or whatever, he's got a spiral, spiral staircase that goes up and it sort of goes to the second floor where we have our really sad scene where he's blown himself up accidentally. Um, and then maybe this is where like your quest marker will lead uh, the safe where he sort of has his like riches or whatever locked up. So just, you know, some minor planning things. And that's sort of how that goes. So after you're done with planning, you can go like just go ham into your designing. Uh, it's really easy. Follow those creation kit tutorials and you can just jump in 
make a plugin, start designing something uh, after you know you do your planning and whatnot. But I sort of use this uh, stepwise uh, process to sort of go through and design things. Otherwise, you know, if you sort of mix and match these things, you're gonna have a bad time. Like, let's say you do the layout and then you do nav mesh or something like that. And then you add clutter, you know, then you have to redo the nav mesh because you mixed around your clutter because NPCs are running into things. Um, uh, yeah, so sort of go along with the stepwise process and you won't have as many problems. Uh, I think everybody probably does this naturally, but it's sort of one thing you want to keep in mind. Uh, sorry, I've got crud floating around me. Um, so step one, uh, you're going to want to start with the layout, uh, the, the most basic parts of your design. You know, you want to have a general plan for your interior, or if you're doing an exterior, that's probably best saved for a different talk. Uh, the interior, you know, you'll use a tile set or you'll use uh, one mesh for a house or something. Just plop that in your render window and you're good to like start going with your designing. So, you know, get your room layouts down, put your doors in, put, you know, big clutter items. So like your beds, uh, your cabinets, uh, like bookshelves and things. And, you know, if you're working with Beyond Skyrim, uh, like alchemy tables, enchanting tables, if this person would have those in their house, uh, you know, whatever basic things you want to put in there. Um, this is where if you're doing like a dungeon, for example, you sort of want to get your uh, rooms started. So um, uh, I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Like Bleak Falls Barrow in Skyrim, for example, like the first dungeon you go in or the Golden Claw, uh, you go straight from Riverwood to that, uh, you know, you get your first shout or your first word for your shout. Uh, you know, it has like an entrance area and then it's got like um, a dungeon area that sort of branches off into a different, uh, a couple different rooms and stuff like that. Uh, and then you have your... Uh, uh, there's like the section with like the spiders and whatnot, and you have Arvel, I think was his name, is like the dark elf thief who's got the golden claw. He's like wrapped up in the spider webs, so that's like a pretty fun scene. You know, make the room pretty cool and whatnot. Uh, and then from there, you know, he starts running up, and he you've got like the puzzle room after that, and then you've got your big boss room, and it's supposed to be like a big set piece, like wow, oh my god, it's this big atrium, it's really cool. So, you know, make it a big room. Uh, you can sort of go and design the sizes of your rooms, how you want them to be in this layout process or in this layout step, rather. Uh, and then from that, uh, you want to go and sort of put your key features in there, the main ideas. So, um, like from our prompt, we sort of want to set up like, where is the alchemy station that Alkir was sitting in when the explosion went off? Uh, where was, uh, you know, where where did his body land when he was blown up? Uh, so key features like that is sort of what you want to do next. So anything from the prompt that is important, uh, set pieces. So like in Bleak Falls Barrow example, you know, put your word wall in there and sort of, you know, put the walk up to the word wall, sort of how does your player want to go about it? Um, uh, put, uh, you know, where Arvel would be locked up by the spiders in the spider webs, put um, uh, maybe some generic enemy layouts to sort of, like, get the flow down, stuff like that. Um, those are your, like, key features you want to focus on for your second part. Uh, and then from there, you can sort of do your clutter. Uh, that's all the details and fluff so to speak so like kitchen utensils if it's a house um like decorations on the wall uh if it's a dungeon like you want to put some like old vines in there or something uh dust particles things like that uh lights uh candles candelabras chandeliers crap like that um in alkir's case he was a mage so i gave him like a lot of mage paraphernalia again so like books uh, bu, 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 what else? Uh, ingredients. Uh, I had him have like some potions lying around, stuff like that. 
Uh, when you do your clutter, you want to make your house look lived in or, you know, make it not look lived in if it's an abandoned house. So sort of take into account what's what's the big idea behind this house. So, you know, everything sort of flows together. What's the big idea behind the house and then clutter it accordingly. You know, don't make an abandoned house look like the guy was cooking the night before if he's been dead for 20 years. And don't make, you know, a lived house, a lived in house look abandoned because that just doesn't make sense. Um, you do your lighting in the clutter phase or, you know, you might do it in the key feature phase, but you might do it in the cluttering phase as well. So like if you throw in some candles or something, or if you throw in like a lantern in a dungeon, you know, put some lights on it, see how it looks. Uh, I think in the creation kit, the light button is A. That's your uh, hot key. So, you know, turn on your lights, see how it looks, because that's sort of how the game is going to do it. And, you know, go from there. And then, haha, buzzword, immersion. The clutter is where the immersion comes in. So, you know, uh, don't just slap some tables down in a house and call it a day. Put some things on those tables. Uh, you know, is the guy a heavy drinker? Put a bunch of bottles. Uh, are the bottles open or closed? You know, ooh, is is are there corks in the bottles still? <laughs> because that'll tell if A, they're drinking, or B, you know, they just throw around full bottles of beer all around their floor. So things like that. Um, and then uh, finalization is sort of like the next step. It's a huge broad topic. And I think Saoli from last month, uh, he's another level design teacher, went into some of this in his talk. So look up that. It should be on the YouTube already. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he went over some of this stuff. Uh, it's the pain in the ass stuff that nobody wants to do, but it's, you know, the pills you have to take at dinner time, so you got to do it. Otherwise, projects like Skywind or Beyond Skyrim, they won't accept you necessarily sometimes if you if you just can't do this stuff because it's part of the level design process. Yes, it sucks, and your pain level is going to go up and up and up, but you have to do it. So Navmesh is the triangle cult. Learn how to do that. And you know, you'll be one with the cult forever. It's a fun time. Optimization is like room bounds and stuff. So if people have lower end GPUs, you know, this is to sort of help them out. Uh, occlusion planes, things like that. Uh, cell data, uh, cell lighting, cell data, and like encounter zones. Those are like nitty gritty, like detail windows. You know, you open it up and it looks like you're opening you know, command prompt, and there's just words like thrown at you. And it's so many settings and so many uh, options. But it's things like this that set apart, you know, a modded dungeon where it's like just generic dungeon, haha, or, you know, a dungeon that's lit really, really well and cinematic. And uh, it sets up the encounter zone. So, you know, you have proper leveled enemies in there as opposed to, you know, Draugr Death Lords walking around at level two when you expect them to be walking around at level two. Uh, this is where you would also do your actor settings. So like I said, you can, you know, do your face gen for your characters. Uh, you can add stats. You can set their levels, their skills. Um, uh, you can put uh, certain things in their inventories if they're unique actors. So oh, Alkir is a mage. Maybe he's wearing a robe. You know, uh, he's a red guard, so take the uh, culture into, you know, effect, stuff like that. Uh, and then uh, it, it depends on the team that you're joining. Uh, in the AU, we don't have a QA, uh, but, you know, as a level designer, you want to do quality assurance on your own so that when you throw it at a teacher to be like, hey, is this good or not? You know, the teacher doesn't immediately look at it and be like, oh, your tile set doesn't snap, or oh, like your lights are flickering. Uh, again, it's more pain in the ass stuff. Uh, it's like beta testing, kind of, but not really, because you're, it sucks. Trust me, it just sucks. You, you want to basically walk through your dungeon, you know, see if everything works well, uh, you know, do your droggers uh, pop out of the, the coffins, or do they not pop out of the coffins? Like, are your tra traps working properly? Um, uh, are there any, like I said, flickering lights like in a house or something? Uh, make sure that like it plays really well uh, and everything works properly. That's like your last step, pretty much. 
and uh this is a lot so you might be like super sad and you might just want to do like one and two maybe three and then you're done but if you want to be a really good level designer you got to do all this stuff so this is like the i don't have kids but it's like the dad and me coming out like do this eat your vegetables do everything otherwise you won't be the best at what you're trying to do uh it's a learning process so you know like get the layout of something done send it to a teacher and you know maybe they'll say yeah it's good keep on going go a step two or you know maybe they'll say eh, keep working at the layout like it doesn't make all that much sense it's too big or it's too maze like something like that uh so you know feel free like i'm basically around all the time uh i might be working on my own stuff but you know feel free if you're a level design student to like shoot me an esp and be like, hey, check out my dungeon. I'll be like, cool, yeah, the clutter sucks or the clutter's great, you know. So that's how you learn. Uh, you'll go step by step. Um, blah, blah, blah. That's kind of everything summarized in case you guys want to come back to this. Um, so with that said, let's go do it. I'll open up Creation Kit and this might be you guys, but let's hope it's not. This should be you guys instead. Yeah, uh, let's go do it. So. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and I'm going to open up Creation Kit real quick. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what my screen looks like right now. Can you guys see Creation Kit? Yes. Yeah. Sick. Okay. So, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go and use this prompt since it's the one that I was working with. Uh, Okay, so just like those morning cooking shows, I have like steps of the level that I designed sort of here because we don't have enough time, but uh, it's supposed to be sort of like an interactive section. So honestly, feel free to like tell me what to put in here based off of the prompt. Um, you know, like these are the main ideas. So we want to make sure it's his home. Uh, we've already got like a bed put in here. Also, I'm using Skywind assets because I just, for some reason, like I don't have the vanilla Skyrim things installed. I just nuked it all, so I had to use what I had. Um, they look so but... good. <laughs> Thanks, it's just a bunch of room. Well, yeah, uh, we'll go through and sort of like, this is what I did for the layout, right? So with the planning phase, you know, we have his one room. And that's pretty much it. And then we have a door here. And then we have his little mage tower, right? I have his little alchemy bench here. And then, you know, we'll go ahead and place him here with his little hat. And we can set him like dead, turn on havoc, throw around his body or something. So, like, his explosion was here, maybe. And then he was flung, you know, 20 feet this way. So we've got the basic layout for our scene here. Um, blah, 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 from the prompt, doo, 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 there was an explosion. So we should probably do like, you know, oh, what does the aftermath of an explosion look like? Anybody have any ideas? Like it, it's not going to look and this wall. What's up? Sorry. Black and walls. Oh yeah, yeah. So I've got um. Crap! I got to remember the name of the. Okay. Yeah. It would be interesting. Probably if... also uh, destroy the alchemy bench or like split it in half or something. Oh, for sure. Yeah, that's where. Uh, that's where a 3D artist has to come in. Because <laughs> we don't have those assets. But we could probably get, like, um, uh, we could probably get... The body see. burnt? Uh, I guess that will, that as well will be. Oh, yeah. There be could be... Oh. Maybe there's rubble. Burnt books. Oh, yeah, we can throw some things around, so... I can go around and I've just taken ideas as they come to me, honestly. The, On just the... a question. Can you embed sure. objects? Oh, of course, you can embed objects into certain objects. 
could we have uh, is I don't know, maybe he's using a knife or a soul gem or something is alchemy and it's embedded in something wooden. Yeah, we can go ahead and do that. Um, like, what about probably, like uh, if he has like uh, bowls or like ceramic shards or anything? They said he was using fire salts and those come in those little bowls. But yeah, there's something about a cauldron also, I think. Um, on the opposite side uh, from the alchemy were on the wall uh, on top of him uh, if there's if there's a way through the cowl to, to place a dent would be interesting. Well, oh, like, yeah, like his body was... Or, or maybe a blood splatter, a small blood splatter on the wall where, like, where he hit his head, if there's not a dent. Oh, yeah. I'm trying to find... I know we have, like, damage decals. Crumbling wall. Yeah, maybe he hit his head and caused that giant crack. <laughs> I can't find anything better right now. I like um, the idea of having a giant scorch mark with the outline of his body. Just completely white. Oh yeah, we could try to do that. That's fun. Um, uh, that sounds like it'd be awkward to do. Unless oh yeah, had, um, so he hits the wall it. here, and then we've got like flame burn. I think this is a small one. Maybe this one. Horse is beam. Whoa, that's <laughs> Yeah, so a fun button to remember for level designers, F5, just like any browser window is refresh, it will save your life nine times out of ten. So the two most important keys are F5 and Control S. Control S as well. Yep. <laughs> Control S is save. I've been clicking the button this entire time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. This is like not looking the best. But... Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we can, we can like scan lines. Uh, Oops. Oops. Oh my god. Okay, Is yeah, it a common kind of like issue with uh, the creation kit having decals bug out like that? Because I had issues of them like overlaying even though I'd only placed one quite often. Yeah. Yeah, so the way the way so decals are work. Custom, are you like a custom decal? Am I using a custom decal? Well, I, I, can you use a custom de decal? Yeah, you yeah, say, you can use custom decals. That's yeah, like an advanced sort of thing you can go in and like edit anything so you know this yeah. is just using you know a dds texture but you could change it to whatever you want okay. so we have so custom decal one, like for example yeah, like so you, could probably just create, yeah, you could probably just create one where it just has like an out like the take like a screenshot of the, the, the model in a pose and then just like use that as an alpha channel yeah if you want to get advanced with it but i don't have time to do that uh I'm using Skywind assets, so we don't have, you know, those alchemy benches. So I'm just going to use these, like throw these. Full set of master um, alchemy equipment at the top oh, of the tower. Oh yeah, he he was. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Forget that. He was a really good alchemist that blew himself up. <laughs> good or in a true true Morrowind uh, uh, fashion, it needs to be all novice things, even in places where. <laughs> Stuff like that fell down the stairs is actually that would be interesting. Oh yeah, yeah. You could like have books that have like been strewn down the stairs, on the or way. fire assaults if any survived the initial explosion because you had those around. For yeah. sure, yeah. I've got a couple, a couple here. Oh, they um, look cool. I'm gonna add some like bowls, maybe. Uh, you can, like, select multiple things in the creation kit, by the way. If you, like, you know, just control click or shift click, stuff like that. Oh, some Havocables. Yeah. 
one thing is you could have some burn marks on the on the underside of the floor so it should be like right just right right underneath the workbench is like not like the huge blast one but just like it's lighter burn marks like as if it, the floor has been burned and warped enough times that if right. the player's looking up that you can see that the, the floor has seen better days <laughs> okay this is where skywind assets are not doing so hot <laughs> Funky. Oh my lord, what? Okay, that oh my god. F5, come on. Okay, yeah. But uh okay, yeah. So this is like us doing, you know, key stuff. Uh I'll move on to like, you know, the second dish that I had prepared, which is like, you know, I sort of went ahead and did some cluttering stuff. You know, fill the bookshelves, make it look natural. You don't have to fill them entirely, but you know, just slap some stuff in there. Um, add some shelving to the walls because you know, in here, you know, the walls are boring as hell. So, you know, sort of add some detail. I uh, sort of made him a red guard. So I added like, you know, these tapestries that had warm colors, these rugs that had warm colors because maybe he likes warm colors or something like that. Uh, he was living in the house, as the prompt says, was. So, you know, I made it look lived in. He's got shoes by the bed. Uh, he's got, you know, a little dinner sort of set up going on. Some scrolls in the window just kind of hanging out. Like, he's actively studying. He's got some bottles. Uh, for you immersion nuts out there, these bottles are all corked as opposed to uncorked, which we have that option in our asset set, so, you know, sort of going along. Uh, oops. I cluttered the bookshelf here. Uh, this is a really creative use of assets. So we have this like candle holder here, which is supposed to be, you know, put on the wall, but I used it as like a bookend. It looks a little mashed. So, you know, other level design teachers might yell at me, <laughs> but um, I how think it looks avoid, okay. Uh, stuff exploding when placed kind of tightly packed, like when the player starts interacting with something. I'm sorry. Because like I know like the uh, physics engine can derp a bit is if you have like, a bunch of like items crammed onto a surface and the player interacts with one. Right. So... Right. So one, one fun option in the CKA is if you have a havocable object, you can sort of set it not the havoc if you double click on the object okay which will you're right if you interact with one of these objects it's and they're not havocable like if you grab the alembic for example suddenly everything on the bookshelf that was near it is going to want havoc so this will havoc uh this will havoc the books will havoc so they'll start to go nuts uh, you just, it's sort of a, you know, test of patience. You have to go into creation kit or sorry, go into the game, sort of see if it works. If it doesn't work, come back here, fix it up a little bit, stuff like that. So these buckets, they're all havocable, but they're all sort of playing nice right now. And then suddenly you go in game and it looks like that. <laughs> so, you know, you kind of have to go about it. It's a process. But uh, moving on, we have our finished product over here, which is like, ta-da, I did it. Um, I added lights. So right here we have a shadow light, which uh, we might have like a small talk later on by who knows who, maybe me, I don't know, on lighting, because lighting can be a big issue. Um, this is a shadow light. This is an omni light or an omnidirectional light. Same with this one. Shadow lights can be pretty buggy. Uh, these are particle effects. So I added like some smoke to the like mage tower to sort of show that there's like, you know, there's uh, there was an explosion. So some particle effects and whatnot. Uh, I added a chest here. You know, it's probably got his riches in there. We can go and edit the base and see what's in there. Yeah, so it's got like expensive clothes, some gold. Uh, but, but, but we can also, oops, 
a useful key in Creation Kit. I'm hiding these. You can press one once to make it so that it's not selectable, and then you can press one again so you can hide it completely. Uh, any object that you select, you can press Alt one to unhide things, and it unhides everything. Also, in your cell view, you have objects listed here. It will show what's hidden and what's not hidden. So, if I hide the tower, it should show up as blue, so it's hidden. Uh, we're running out of time here, but just some final things. I went and like edited his inventory, so he has a key on him to get into that chest. If you know you're an inquisitive player and mess with dead bodies, uh, blah, 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 blah. stuff like that. But uh, in the last two minutes. Just go ahead and show you guys what it looks like in game, because why not? Everybody can still see what's going on, right? Yep. yep. Okay, cool. Uh, it'll take a couple seconds for me to load in, because I have like ENB binaries still active from like an old install, but they still want to take forever to load. Did he have like a a pet or like any kind of guardian animal thing? Oh, that's another thing you could take into account. I, I didn't take it into account. I, I made him as lonely as possible. <laughs> that's what the prompt made it seem like. To me, at least. But yeah, I could have added like a baby guar or something in there. Yeah, I don't want to cut into Nariel's talk at all. I've got probably like 30 seconds to run through here. Oh. Uh... Come on. Loading is so much fun. Hey. So yeah, we've got it looking nice in game. And as per Morrowind, we have a key under the pillow that will open his mage tower. Which is all nice and fun. And then you start to see, you know, oh, there's a dead body. Oh, darn. So we grab his key, we grab his gold. You know, and then you're like, oh, no, what is this scene? It looks disgusting. So, you know, other level design teachers might yell at me because it looks nasty. But. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Whoops. Hooray. Thanks for Thank coming you. to my talk, everybody. <laughs>